Uh, it's a Vibe Check Tuesday, and we get to vibe check you on the Commanders as they start their off-season workout plans. Um, it is uh, phase one, which typically is without the coaches. Um, this is part or the part of the off-season that is typically for most teams uh, a like organized team workout. Uh, Strat- Chad Englehart, the strength coach, would typically lead it, all of that. But because the commanders have a new staff and specifically a new head coach, they are allowed to actually do on-field work. So we don't get to see any of it. It's all behind closed doors. Uh, the reporters will get a chance to talk to a number of players, including Terry McLaurin and John Allen, via Zoom tomorrow. So we will get a bit of a sense of how things are going, the early stages of the install. But uh, there is actual football being uh, quasi-practiced in Ashburn as of today, Anthony. So we will get the social media post of the pictures. We'll see who's in those pictures. Uh, Did everybody show up? Ah, those controversies. They're so much fun each and every spring. Uh, But, Anthony, I think what we're going to do today for Vibe Check Tuesday at 301-230-0980 is simply ask folks, like, what are your expectations for the 2024 season? The Commanders have signed now, I think a tw- I think it's, we're up to 24. Uh, they signed another uh, backup linebacker today. Uh, but the, the depth just continues to grow. We know they still have a big hole at left tackle. We know they still have a quarterback uh, that they're going to draft uh, in the first round, likely, uh, overwhelmingly likely, at number two. Um, so there, there's all of those things that we still know. But I do think we are deep enough in this now that we've seen it and, of course, the uh, the timing uh, that we will start to see them on the field very soon that we can say, like, what do we think this team will be in 2024? So 301-230-0980 is the phone number for you to chime in on that over the next hour. Anthony, I will let you, however, start. You get first crack at 2024 expectations. Wow, what an honor. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to lie. My expectations aren't too high. Um, because again, I understand we are a couple of years away, but I just feel as though, you know, our fan base, like everybody want to see, you know, some type of winning when it comes to, you know, the the football team in general. So I'm expecting, or I'm hoping, uh, we can go out there, play and go maybe like seven and 10, six and 11, somewhere around there, just because I feel as though we have a lot of work to go. Again, we had to overhaul the entire roster. I, I mean, that that seems to what's been done um, the last couple of weeks. And now we got to, you know, jail. We got a potentially a, a rookie quarterback coming in, new staff, new everything, to be honest. So I just think this year should just be all about, you know, setting the foundation. So we're out there getting six, seven wins. I think that's a step in the right direction. And then we build in, build on it from there um, in, like, you know, the next couple of seasons. I think there's kind of two sets of expectations. I think there's the process expectations, Mm -hmm. and I think there's the results expectations. And I guess we're kind of looking uh, for folks to chime in on both. I think the process expectations are you compete week in and week out. I think the process expectation is that you ultimately are able to line up every week and, you know, not get blown out, be competitive through large stretches of games, And the things that are going to ultimately undermine you are the fact that you don't have the talent. And especially at the quarterback position, you will be looking at uh, a rookie who is learning on the job and probably is going to make a few critical errors at times. And hopefully we'll all be responsible enough not to freak out about it uh, and ultimately be able to, uh, you know, be able to, to handle it with some kind of care, some kind of actual responsibility uh in terms of the commentary and just say like hey don't make the same mistake twice certainly don't make it three times but we understand that you're a rookie and there's there's only so much you can do when you get got by an nfl defensive coordinator and a bunch of nfl veterans uh which you will undoubtedly have on your schedule um but you also just don't have the playmaking that at times you're going to need a guy to step up and do something spectacular and and that those players aren't necessarily on this roster right now um, now I think I certainly think that we could be in for some surprises. Um, you know, you have like Duran Bland all of a sudden emerge out of nowhere. It feels like last year for Dallas because this defensive coaching staff um, and a lot of the pieces that came over from Dallas know how to generate turnovers. So hopefully you get that. You know, you have your chins and your Luvus and some of these impact type of players on the defensive side of the ball that you're hoping can step up 
and help you be competitive, help get some of those higher variance plays, the turnovers, things like that. And then offensively, like we'll see. But I also think what's going to be interesting to see is like how conservative or aggressive are they from the game plan standpoint? Because I kind of feel like they should be hyper aggressive defensively and then pretty conservative offensively. And that formula could keep you around 500 and it's going to take some luck. It's going to take some bounces, but we talk about the the process. That to me is the process. The results are somewhere between a six and nine win team. And, you know, it, lo and behold, you get the number two pick that turns into CJ Stroud 2.0 and you've got quarterback play. Well, now we can party. Now you're talking about a, a nine, 10 win team uh, potentially in the way that Houston was last year. Um, wasn't exactly the strongest division. I, I think we'll, it's going to be an interesting year in the NFC East. I could see it going any number of ways, um, but I'm not anticipating for the second straight year, the number two overall pick having the best rookie season in the history of the NFL. That just seems unlikely. So I, I think, Anthony, I'm much more in the exactly where you are. Six, seven, maybe if some things go really well, eight wins. And a, a good feeling about the future. That that to me is, I think, where, where my hope is. And my not even my hope, my realism is for 2024. Yeah, I mean, I think you said it perfectly uh, when you, you know split it up based on like process and results. Process-wise, definitely, I agree. Defensively, uh, we got a defensive-minded head coach. You know, we have we've invested so much on the defensive side of the ball, and let's see if he can get the you know the most out of those defensive players. And we have those guys under contract for the next couple of years, so why not lean on that and you know let that be our leading uh, force? And then you know not to just put so much on the, uh, the the rookie quarterback. So I think you're absolutely right when you when you talk about Dan Quinn and, you know, the defensive staff inserting himself and, you know, just trying to make the most of what we already have invested in that unit. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, like, I think as long as they establish the play style and are competitive week in, week out, which kind of go hand in hand, I'm good with whatever happens in 2024. If they are a pain in the butt to play every week, and especially if it gets harder to play them as the year goes, then I'm good in 2024. I have no no misgivings about the talent on this roster, where there are holes, where there are questions, and especially the limits of subpar quarterback play. I think I've seen enough of it at this point that I should know better and uh, certainly think that we learned that lesson uh, in terms of consistency. And, and But also we'll see what the game plan is uh, week in and week out because uh, last year we never could have guessed that the game plan would be as subpar as it was. Uh, but we'll see what that is in 2024. 24. What are your expectations? 301 230 Got a couple calls already lined up, but plenty of phone lines open. What are your expectations for 2024 for the commanders as they open their offseason workouts? Taking your calls for the hour here on a Vibe Check Tuesday. Right now, though, 301 230 That is the Team 980 listener line, and we get things started uh, with our question of the day. What are your expectations for the Commanders in 2024 on the day that they're starting their off-season workouts? And let's get things going with Nate in PG. Nate, what's up? You're on the Hoffman Show. Man, nice to be the first one to get the ball rolling. And I, I want to say, look, uh, I'm a Packers fan, but I'm born and raised in DMV, and I listen to you guys all the time. And I think it, it's a little hard to be – so uh, objective when you're immersed in it um, week to week. But I actually believe that if you look back over the couple of, last couple of years, this uh, team has had opportunities to, to make late playoff pushes and, you know, be in situations that really, I guess, showcases a bit. They don't have as much talent deficiency as I think you might think and other other members might think of the fan base. And I actually feel like, you know, if you've got the right staff, I think coaching is really, really, really important. The older I get, the more I realize how important coaching is. And I don't think they had the proper staff last couple of years to get the most out of the talent that they had acquired. And um, if you look at but if you look at what they did in the offseason, brought in a lot of veterans that can establish a culture. Um, and they brought in some guys who have won in, in, in their past, you know, previous stops. And they brought in some young talent that I feel like can have an opportunity to shine in a new place. So all you really need is a, is a quarterback. And, you know, you're one good draft away from being able to turn around, look at the Texans, 
Look at, I mean, I'm drawing a blank on other teams here, but well, that's that's teams. the problem though, Nate. Is like outside of the Texans, it's no, really they're, hard they're, to do I, it with a rookie the, quarterback the Bengals, in year one. The Bengals did a, had a turnaround from uh, overnight uh, when they brought in Burrow. Burrow's um, Burrow was really two years though. Like they Burrow's rookie year, they were not nearly as well, good in part because he got though. hurt. He missed a lot of the first year, didn't he? Yeah, he did, but um, I mean, it's still like they were. It's not like they were killing it that rookie year. Also, Burrow's kind of uh, like one of the most unique prospects in the last bunch of years because he was so NFL ready coming out, and the chances of finding that again feel very slim. But I I, I, I push back because I really, when you look at it, the last couple of years, I I really believe that there have been guys that came into the league and been able to show promise early on. I, and I promise think is different than winning now, immediately, though. Like, that's that's the whole point here. Well, to, I, I, I mean, I think they have the ability to, to turn it around. If you have the right coaching staff, I think the offense has an opportunity. They have pieces on this offense. I just don't think that For the sure. talent is – I don't think they're as bereft of talent as it's been portrayed uh, over the past couple of years and especially months as as the excitement has ramped up for the new regime. That's all I'm saying. I, I yeah, think Nate, that- and I don't disagree with you. I appreciate the call, man. Um, and, and I don't disagree with you. In fact, I'm one of the people that I think has loudly said, I, don't, I think this talent is better than we thought. And it really comes down to how poorly it was used and how heinously it was mismanaged within the context of football. Like, it's just, they did a bad job. But they also obviously built a roster that a lot of the rest of the league thought was not very good. At the very least, Adam Peters and Dan Quinn didn't think was very good because they jettisoned half of it in their first offseason. They brought in a lot of other really solid players, but they're lacking two things that get you over the hump. They're lacking stars, and they're lacking quarterback play. And again, if they can get a number two pick to come in, like I agree, they could be the Texans 2.0. But... The chances of getting the best rookie quarterback season in the history of the league two years in a row feels crazy. Um, and that's what CJ Stroud had last year. He was a borderline, if not bona fide, MVP candidate as a rookie. You don't see that. Like Cam threw for 4,000 yards back in the day. Andrew Luck was good every single year he was in the league. Uh, it just health was an issue there. Um, but like even Peyton Manning, like awful rookie season, let you know set the record for interceptions. You know Burrow was pretty solid his rookie year, um, sixty five percent completion, thirteen touchdowns, five picks, played in ten games. But they were two and two seven and one in his ten starts that year. Next year they were ten and six, and he helped them get to the Super Bowl. Um, but. The idea that they are, that league, even Burrow, who was 24 years old, NFL ready as they come, number one overall pick consensus by a mile, even he struggled as a rookie. And so it's not that I, I really vehemently disagree with anything Nate said from like the analysis standpoint. It's just that saying, well, they're a quarterback away is like saying you're a tire away from being able to drive down the road. Like that's a pretty important piece of the vehicle that we're, uh, we're missing here, or an engine away from driving down the road. Like, okay, cool, we got a bunch of tires, but we need something to move them forward. Uh, let's go to the junkyard dog, JYD, calling in with us on the Hoffman Show. JYD, what are your expect- expectations for the 2024 Commanders? Well, I I, I don't put too much uh, hope in, 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 uh, in this coming year. And uh, in fact, I don't put too much hope coming hope in, in 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 the next two and a half years simply because when you look at the when you look at what they did this season, I, uh, as far as the roster, they got a lot of people that that are, that are one, on one year deals. That tells me that these that these people more likely won't be here the next year. And when I hear so many people calling in talking about, well, we got we we got nine picks or whatever, just. Nine picks is not a lot of picks when you're trying to fill out a 53-man roster. And plus, you have to count on at least maybe one or two of those people might not make it. So maybe you're talking maybe about six players that you that, – infusion that you might have. So I, I don't see – I say it's going to take at least two and a half years to, 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 to really 
say that you're ready for anything. And then you got the quarterback. Look, people keep like the guy that was just talking. You was just talking to mediocrity quarterback play does not cut it in the NFL. It does not get you anywhere. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it can get you like to five hundred if you insulate it properly and you don't make those quarterbacks do a whole lot. But you're one hundred percent right. So, so, so you eight. So, so what? So, so, so well, so, so you went. So you win eight games or seven games or whatever. Right. Close it, whatever. But I mean, but but is that really what? You, is that really what you want? Not long term, but like, who cares about? I don't want to say who cares, but like. In 2024, it is what it is. You can't you can't get a star quarterback without letting them bake. Like you gotta you can't turn the 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 temperature up to 800 degrees on a recipe that says 400 and cook it in half the time. Like that's not how that's okay, not how I, player I'm development listen, works. I'm listening I'm listening to you all the time, uh, 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 Harvin, on, on, on your show, and you and you and you seem to be the type guy. That also doesn't just look at yes today. You, 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 you. I think you look ahead as far as what you might want to do with your show and this and this and that and whatever. Sure. So, I, so, what? So you have to also. I, I look at it to say, okay, teams that are trying to build themselves, not just the commanders, but now you talking about maybe next year, if there is a quarter. Let, let's say, for instance, they trade back and let's say they wait to get a quarterback. Who's to say next year when you got when you got when you got prime time coming in? May, maybe his son is is is, is whatever, Maybe he's the number two, uh, one pick or maybe. the number two pick, and he sa- and he says nope, don't don't want to go to Washington. Well, yeah, I mean, like, there's always the what ifs. I still think I'm I'm not even saying like trade back. I'm saying you take a guy this year. He's just not going to be good this year. That doesn't mean he's not good next year or he's not good in two years. Okay, what, what what's this thing? Another big question I got for you. What what's this thing about this about a uh, uh, Daniel's elbow? Oh, he's just got bursitis. It's it's a sack of fluid. It's fine. It's nothing. It's a funky picture that looks really weird, but he's not a cyborg. He's fine. But is it going? Okay, but is it going to have to be drained uh, constantly or, or whatever? I don't know enough about his medical information to answer that question. Okay, okay, and whatever. So you know, like I say, you know. It, to me, it sounds like you, it, it, it'd be better for them may, maybe to tr- drop back some, get the get get the guy a Penix, or like I say, I don't know why people don't like a, a Bo Nix. They say okay, he 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 he, throw, he, throw, he checks down too much, or he throws the bubble screen. Hey, don't forget now, there's a lot of bubble screens that are thrown in the NFL, even though I don't particularly like the place. Well, there's not as much as he threw at Oregon. All right, Jay Woody, I appreciate the call. We're going to keep it moving. Uh, we got other folks uh, con- chiming in, 301-230-0980. Um, a couple of things. Bo Nix, I actually don't mind Bo Nix. It's not the guy that I'm – I'm not going to be like, yeah, we got our guy, Bo Nix. Um, but if you want to build a – like young Kirk cousins like super insulated offense around a guy like Bo Nix. Could you do it and, you know, win eight games? Yeah, I think the problem with a guy like Bo Nix is you're always going to be in that, hey, we got a guy, but we don't have the guy and we're going to need to upgrade. Like, I doubt that Nix is going to develop into something where you feel confident saying we have a top 10 quarterback in the league. And that is the difference between him and Penix versus the other four. I think there's a chance that all four of the other guys, especially Williams, obviously, but May, Daniels, McCarthy, all have upside to be top 10 quarterbacks. And then you're set at the position versus like, we have a guy, but maybe we could do better, which is a terrible position to be in. You get stuck in limbo. um, And that, you know, leaves you questioning like, oh, are we going to get hot and have a Joe Flacco an Eli Manning? Or is it going to be Kirk Cousins and Dak Prescott where like, we're pretty sure these guys are pretty good, but we don't have the playoff wins to show for it. So that's thing one. Thing two, going back to the very beginning of of the Junkyard Dogs call. Um, Nine picks is a lot. And it's not just like they have nine random picks. They don't have four picks in the top, you know, 60 and then five in the last 200. They don't have a bunch of sixth and seventh rounders. They have six picks in the top 100. That is six potential starters. That is a huge percentage of your roster in one draft class. And certainly if they have a lot of draft capital moving forward as well. They have a full deck and the chance to acquire more. So uh, with all of that said, if you can get over the next couple of years, you know, let's say 12 to 15 starters 
uh, on that are draft guys. You know, they get like six, seven this year. Um, you know, and not not necessarily starting immediately, but over the next five, you know, three to three to four years, you get six, seven this year, and and you know, again, let's say six, seven next year. That's twelve to fourteen guys. Like that would be incredible over two draft classes. But they're giving themselves the chance because they have high picks, and, and they're trying to acquire more. You do that. Plus, yes, they have a lot of one-year deal guys right now, but you could re-sign some of these guys. Also, they have some some of these guys that are key starters. Um, some of them will be a lot, like Biotish and Dorrance Armstrong and, and um, oh, God, I'm now blanking. Uh, Biotish, Armstrong, um, Leland. Lu, Luvu, uh, Chin, Cleveland Furl. Like, those guys will be around. And you still have guys that you like from previous draft classes. Like, you could still like have Quan Martin and Emmanuel Forbes for a long time. Hopefully there's a couple of other guys that wind up panning out despite how bad they looked early on. Chris Rodriguez should be around for a while. You know, then you do have a couple of studs. Like Sam Cosme is a really good right guard. Sam Cosme is a centerpiece for this team, a building block piece for this team. So the cupboard's not completely barren. You don't have to remake all of it. And they are giving themselves the chance. So I, I also just, the thing that like, I don't want to say it irks me, but like the thing I question about stuff like that is um, like, what's your plan? That's better. What are you actually looking to do? And this goes back to the Josh Harris quote. If you want to get to eight and eight real fast, I could, I could GM a team that was eight and eight this year. It's not that hard. You want to build a sustainable winner over time. That's why you hire someone like Adam Peters. Someone who understands the long-term vision of how to put together the pieces, how the math works on the salary cap, has that long-term vision, that skill set to build a sustainable winner that is not just an 8-8 eight and eight team, but is a 10-12 to 12 win team year over year that legitimately gives you a chance to win a championship. That's what you're looking for. That's, that is the long-term goal. But for now, the question is, as the commanders start their offseason workouts today, 301-230-0980 is where you answer it. Uh, what are your expectations for 2024? 301-230-0980. More of your calls next. On a five-check Tuesday this hour here on the Team 980. Don't forget, you miss any part of the show. Uh, so say you're listening right now and you're like, man, I was, I, I'm was, i excited to talk about this, but I really was hoping to hear Craig's take on the Iowa-LSU game we're going to talk about that in the 5 o'clock hour, but we podcast everything. So uh, after we get done talking about it, you'll be able to go to the Hoffman Show podcast feed and check that out. Uh, the one, the only, Anthony Haney works on that very diligently. We would appreciate it if you listened. Uh, and, and really also, it's just, you know, we're doing this for you. We, we put it on demand so that you don't have to glue yourself to your car seat every single day for three hours. You can still enjoy the show while having uh, the rest of your life not in tatters. Okay, uh, let's get to the phones. 301-230-0980 is the phone number. 301-230-0980 is where you call with your expectations for the commanders for 2024. Let's go to Little. Little, thanks for calling. You are back on the Hoffman Show. Yeah, oh, thank you for taking my call, man. Shout out to man, your man Anthony. Hey, that um, Owit, aka the junkyard dog. He got a shiny toy up there in Kansas City. Hey, look, Paul, oh, I'm telling you now, I got us, man. Depth is one word I want to say. Yep, and be hungry, man. You got staff that's hungry from the coach, from the head coach to the defensive coordinator to the offensive coordinator. They all had a little piece of the action, but they never got to the promised land. We gonna keep. We gonna compete for the division. I'm telling you that now. And I see this man, like you say, Peter, going in this draft. And look, the coach from LSU already told you who, who, who the quarterback gonna be. He said he, he, he let it slip, man. He going after Daniels. He going after that kid, man. That kid gonna be. Hey, that kid hold on, hold on, hard, little, man. little. Well, I'll let you keep going in a second. We're not believing Brian Kelly on this show. We do not believe that Brian okay. Kelly knows anything because he's Brian Kelly. Okay. Like, come on, you we. Yeah. The same dude who just faked it, created a country accent when he went to LSU. The same dude that's like left savagely multiple programs. We do not trust Brian Kelly on this radio show. And one thing I can say about Brian Kelly at the at the at the, at the, at the showdown, he was sober. He was sober. So I'm gonna let that I'm gonna let that be. <laughs> hey, look, uh, 
Hey, look, what, <laughs> All right, you what you got? What you got for 2024? What What do you think they're gonna do this year? You I'm clearly gonna, like it. How you know, How bold are you willing to be here? I'm bold. You know, I'm a season ticket holder. I'm bold. I got to compete for the division. Hey man, I like it. from that middle linebacker we brought in. Man, look, guess what? Guess, guess what's gonna happen, Hawk? Huh? They're gonna follow the leader. Everybody gonna follow the leader. So that's what I'm going with, man. I got to compete for the division. Okay. Hey, God bless y'all. Stay. All right. Appreciate you, little. Um, that. Look, I'm not going to poo-poo uh, optimism here. There are no bonus points for pessimism. There are no bonus points for optimism. We're just try- we're just all saying realistically where we're at. It is April 2nd. There is no reason to be like, sit down, you and your optimism, get out of here. We're not doing that on this show. I Do I think that is bold? Yes. It is, is it my prediction? No. I do agree with a lot of the point like I agree with a lot of what little said I just don't come to the same conclusion with that information right I do think that there's a hunger on both sides of the ball I do think Cliff and Joe Witt bring something to their perspective rooms in terms of that like hey I got something to prove here Joe Witt because he feels like he's been passed over Cliff because he's looked at as a failure and um he he's like no just like watch what I do when I'm an OC I'm gonna remind y'all how good I am at this and even if the head coaching thing's been more of a mixed bag Obviously, DQ, second time around, he's, he's got something to prove. There is a hunger to a lot of elements of this organization in a way that there hasn't been in the past. But more importantly, there is a competence to every area of this organization that there hasn't been in the past. The, where I hit a snag, the, the, the hole that I think is bigger than I guess Little does is the, the skill level uh, across the board, right? They have some really nice hungry players. The depth is fantastic. They lack top-end talent. Quarterback plays a question. That leads me to think they're going to be falling behind Philadelphia, behind Dallas, and then we'll see what New York is. I mean, I I just don't categorically have faith in the Giants because every time I feel like that they could be good, I'm I'm out here just Charlie Browning it up. It's time I'm going to kick that football clear to the moon. <laughs> Idiot. Thought the Giants could be good last year. I think Dable's a good coach, but I just I don't believe in them. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but that's, that's the most optimistic call we got so far. Uh, let's go to Daniel in Richmond, see what he's got. Daniel, what is your, uh, or what are your expectations for the commanders in 2024? Hey, Craig, appreciate you taking my call. You got it. Um, (laughs) look, um, I'm tired of the whole, um, optimism thing like okay so i i know you just you just stated that you know you're not gonna paint on optimism or hit on pessimism but i'm kind of thinking there's this, like kind of a confusion with optimism and delusion to a sense because <laughs> i will admit i was very delusional last year seeing that one game of sam howell would um in turn fix our qb situation and ultimately at least have a seven to ten season Boy, was I wrong. So now I am just going to hold my tongue when it comes to being so optimistic. Now, in terms of quarterback, um, I like the three guys. I like all of them. I mean, they all have their pros and cons. Whichever one they pick, I want one of them to start and see what happens. And I want to see a competitive play on the field that's consistent and that there is some sort of mesh and continuity within the coaches and players. Because obviously last year, there was a big disconnect, a huge disconnect with Ron. People respected Ron, but I don't know what it was. It just was not clicking last year, especially last year. The do your job thing, that drove me crazy. <laughs> Daniel, I'm not gonna lie. You sound like you sound like my inner monologue because I from the Howell thing. Not necessarily I thought Howell was gonna solve all the problems, but like I was like, I don't know. I think this kid can play a little bit, and you know, with the enemy coming yeah. in, like he'll be smart in how he uses them. Seven to ten wins, like yeah, they could do this, and um, you know what you just said as well uh, about all that, like. All these are things that I agree with you because I said them all right here on this radio show. And so I, th- I think you yeah. and I are in the same place where it's like, you know, the results end of it, like, we'll see. But from a process standpoint, like, just be competitive and I'll row your boats in the same direction. And that'll be such an improvement that I'll feel good about it. Craig, do you know how many quarterbacks have started for this team since 2000? 472,563. Not not quite that many. Do you have the actual number? No. 
27. 27, yeah. Since 2000. Anytime and you're competing in a, in a bad statistic with the Browns, you're in bad shape. Like, that's that's ridiculous. So, yeah. you know, um, I just want to, like, I just want to see a competitive game. The competitive games throughout, I believe in what Peters and um, Peters and uh, Josh Harris are doing and all that. Like, I'm just trying to be positive in that way. Like, I know it's going to take process. Like, in the, everybody that goes back to the Houston thing, that was once in a generation. Like, everybody needs to calm down. I know this whole thing, like, just because it, it happened before, it can happen again. But For sure. That's, no, I I agree with you. The the chances are are just so slim. Daniel, great call. Appreciate it. Thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for calling in. Uh, this is of course Vibe Check Tuesday on the Hoffman Show, and you like Daniel and and JYD and uh, everyone else has called in before. Can call optimism little, you know, with his optimism. Uh, Daniel with his realism. All all calls welcome. 301-230-0980. We got one more segment of them. 301-230. 0980 and then we hit the uh, college basketball from last night starting at the top of the hour. What are your uh, expectations for the commanders in 2024? Let's start off with RC and Indian head. RC, thanks for calling. You are on the Hoffman show. Yeah, Craig, thanks for taking my call. Um I I'm, I'm going to say that I think that Dallas Washington and the Giants, I mean, not the Giants, uh, Philadelphia is going to be close. Close in close in performance and uh, games because both of the other teams are rebuilding. And Dallas is in the fit. And Philadelphia is in the fit, so they're rebuilding as well as Washington. Now, I will say this, even though you asked that question, what's your prediction for 2024? Washington could have won more games last year than they than they did because they wanted to have more picks in the draft. Now, when they bought... No, Kobe they the just game, sucked down the stretch. Like, they were a no, bad no, football me, team. They did not lose intention. Now, I'm not entertaining this. We're, we got too many other no. calls. That is a silly a silly premise. I am not doing that. They are. That was a bad football team that was coached like crap. Uh, and that was that was the I've covered this team since 2015. I've covered a lot of bad football. That is the worst te- worst uh, stretch of football that I've seen in that entire time. They had like fourth string quarterbacks some of the Gruden years, and it was was not as bad as some of the football that they played in the back half of last year. We're not doing that. Um, that doesn't mean that they can't. That some of these players aren't better, but it wasn't like they tanked. Not not the case. Uh, let's go to JT. JT, thanks for calling. You are on the Hoffman Show. What's up, Greg? What's up, bro? I'm good, man. But uh, my prediction is, if if we get Jaden Daniels, I'm I'm saying that we'll be uh, eight eight and one. And then uh, if we select May or McCarthy, because I think they'll be more of a project and not ready to play, so we'll see uh, Mariota for too much of what we really want to see of him. And I think uh, we'll end up going uh, like six and eleven if Mariota. Uh, plays a lot uh, until the rookie gets in. JT, I think it's a great call. It's it's an interesting concept because I don't disagree that their best option for next year of all the options on the board might be Jaden Daniels uh, or might not be Jaden Daniels. Um, he is the most ready of the three. I don't know that he's the best guy long term, which is obviously a, a discussion that we've had at nauseum and will continue to have as we continue to to break things down over the next month leading into the draft, but. For next year, I think you can build an offense that uses some of Jaden Daniels' strengths uh, that match up well with some of the strengths already on this football team. Um, and and I do think he's the most pro-ready guy. So I think that's an interesting uh, interesting take that I like. Uh, let's go to Billy, who I think has an, an equal but opposite take, if you will. Billy's down in Miami. Billy, what are your expectations for the Commanders for 2024? Hey, Craig. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, my expectations are a plus eight game win year, even being conservative in a year we are creating foundation for the future. I am optimistic. Now, I, I, I mentioned uh, that the main reason I'm calling, though, is because I was incredibly excited last week about the pro days of Caleb Jaden and Drake May. I watched them all in full live and in prime time and was frustrated that the monumental sports news seemed to take over all of the news last week. And we never had an opportunity to talk about uh, this. So I'm late to the party, but I do want to tell you that 
I work in finance and hedge funds for a living. I read people. And I saw that Drake May Pro Day. Dan Quinn was giddy. And there is no question in my mind right now that they were going to be taking Drake May, which makes me happy. And I, I, I kind of agree with the other caller that, you know, it depends on who we take depending on our success because Drake might be a work in progress. But I'd love to do a gentleman's bet with you. I'll even give you odds that we will be taking Drake May. I mean, they were they couldn't even they almost like they wanted to jump in the huddle. They were so excited. Billy, so I, I am to bring that Billy, up. Billy, Billy, I'm too smart for this. Uh, I I also have seen the betting markets shift. You can't you can't get me on odds because right now Drake May is the <laughs> odds on favorite. Uh, so that was a nice try. But no, the betting for whatever the betting markets have been, I think, behind a lot of the analysts here being like, no, they're still going to go Jaden Daniels, whatever, for whatever reason. Vegas knows things. They don't air condition the desert desert because they lose out there. But literally today, I think all the markets shifted or in the last 24 hours, all the betting markets shifted. And Drake May is now the favorite at number two, uh, according to, Did to Vegas. Did you see Dan Quinn? Did you see his face? I, yeah, I, I mean, I but they, they also had moments with, uh, you know, there, people point to the Adam Peters moment with Jaden Daniels dapping him up before they get started. Like, I, they, the, the rumors out of Michigan were that they had a great, great meeting with J.J. McCarthy. So I, I think it's too much to read body language. I think you can like multiple guys. Ultimately, it's going to come down. To, to one, and and I think that's the fun of it. But I, I hear you. I think that, I mean, some of this, Drake's last 10 minutes of that pro day was insane. He also did all the other stuff that drives you nuts. I mean, it was kind of the thing. is like these pro days have shown you all the things that if you watch the tape, you're like, yep, nope, confirmation, saw it in person. Um, so it's been an interesting process for sure. And Billy, and as always, thanks thanks for the call, man. We got, we got a bunch of uh, yeah. other calls on the line, so I'm going to have to let you go. Um, and I want to try to get to Shaq and AJ before the, the time is out. Apologies to Billy. Uh, let's go to Shaq. Shaq, thanks for calling. What are your expectations for 2024? What's up, Hall? Thanks for taking my call. You got uh, it. My, my expectations, um, I think we can win about nine to ten games, and here's the reason why. Number one, I think Jaden Deans is the pick. He's going to bring so much electricity and excitement. Our defense is going to be better. We got better minds on defense. And I think that uh, it's not we're not going to be passing the ball 60 times a game, and it's not going to be all on his shoulders the way it was when Sam Howe. And I think if we get the city and the crowd and everything behind our team, I think that that's going to um, help us out a lot. I think we can have a, a season like how, similar to the Texans. Yeah, I, I mean, I hear you, and, and I think that there is a version of events where it could go down like that. I just think that's unlikely. Like, as a ceiling, I hear you. Um, I think in terms of, like, where I would make my prediction, it's a lot closer to the six-and-a-half number that Vegas put out. But I don't, think it's, I don't think it's totally unreasonable if they play it the way that you said in terms of a game plan. Um, that is, it looks a little RG3-esque, actually, in terms of 2012 and uh, the way they built that offense and really leaned on Alfred Morris and and, and some of the weapons that they had. Uh, Shaq, thanks for the call. Last but not least, let's go to AJ in District Heights uh, as we're up against the clock here. AJ, uh, get, finish us off here. Your uh, expectations for 2024 for the Commanders. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. I think my expectation is just to be patient. Um, only three only three quarterbacks on their rookie deal, because I know this trend for rookie deals and winning on your rookie deals is a thing in the NFL, but it's only happened three times, really. Pat Mahomes, who won it in his third year. I think Russell Wilson won it in his second year. And Joe Barrow, who went to the Super Bowl in his second year. So it's not like a thing where these rookies are going to automatically come in and win. So I, I just think everybody just needs to be patient. I am excited. I think we had a playoff team last year, but I'm glad we didn't make the playoffs because we got the coaching staff, the GM, and now we got the number two pick that we want. So I, I think we're a good team. I think we could make a playoff push last year, but I'm all about Super Bowls. And um, so I think it's going to be a couple of years for that. Yeah, no, AJ, appreciate the call. Thank you. And I'd, I'd add Brock Purdy uh, is on his rookie contract, obviously made the Super Bowl last year. But look at the rest of that roster. Look how much high-end talent. This is my thing. Like, Brock Purdy, one, is way better than we ever thought. So we need to stop talking about him like Mr. Irrelevant. Like, Brock Purdy is probably a top 10, borderline top 10 NFL quarterback. I know it doesn't look the same as some of the other guys, but, like, all he does is deliver the ball on time on target. Excellent work out of him. But he's able to do that to really, really exceptional players, and that, to me, is the path. Like, can you find other guys in this draft where picks, not just pick two is really important, but picks 36 40 67 70 on down the list are starters and you even get one or two stars out of that 
that turn into the Fred Warners and the Tafungas and some of the other guys that they have out in San Francisco, the Debo Samuels, um, the Brandon Ayukes that make the Niners a model for what you want to build in the same way that Detroit has found Amon Ross St. Brown and others later in the draft. You have to get one, if not two or three of those, not to mention uh, you, you do yourself a huge disservice if you do not hit on quarterback at number two. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Gates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.